So Potamod is a member of the S1P class of medications. This is the same class as Fungolimod, which we have been using for over a decade for treating relapsing MS. Saponamod so is a little bit different in that it doesn't uh, activate all of the S1P receptors, but only activates the S1P1 and the S1P5 subsets. And by modulating those receptors, has a little bit different effect within the body and on the immune system. Nonetheless, it probably works in a relatively similar fashion in that it sequesters white blood cells into the lymph nodes, preventing them from getting into the brain to induce inflammation and injury. Saponomod so also probably crosses, at least to some extent, into the brain and may have some direct activity within the brain. Saponamod so was studied in a large phase three trial in secondary progressive MS. And this was secondary progressive MS patients both who had relapses in the short time prior to the trial and those that didn't have relapses shortly before the trial. These patients were randomized to either saponamod or a placebo and then followed over time with a primary outcome, sustained progression of disability. At the end of the study, uh, the investigators found that indeed saponamod was associated with a slowing of progression of disability of about 21%. When there was further evaluation of the patient characteristics who tended to respond better than others, what was found was that the patients who had active inflammation, who were younger, who had less disability, all the things pointing towards an earlier stage of the disease, they were more likely to respond to saponamod than the other types of patients, those who didn't have active inflammation at the start of the disease, those who were older, those who had more disability. And so it has raised the question, okay, it's helpful in secondary progressive MS, but is clearly more helpful in that left end of the secondary progressive MS spectrum, those who had active inflammation and were younger. And indeed, this study didn't enroll secondary progressive patients who were much older, like those are in their late 60s to 70s, which is a very common patient that we see in clinic with secondary progressive MS. So the EXPAND trial uh, succeeded. It was, they had a statistically significant reduction in disability accumulation in the saponamide treated group as compared to placebo group. Uh, on subset analysis, it turned out that the majority of the effect that was seen was seen in individuals who had had some activity, clinical activity, in the two years prior to entering the trial. Uh, and, and so there's some thought, but not really tested because it's a subset analysis, but some thought that the primary effect was on the inflammatory aspect of the disease. That may be correct, but one can't assume that by doing subset analyses in the study. The group that was studied in the EXPAND trial was a very well characterized secondary progressive MS group um, chosen to having had entered a progressive phase, and they did, and so they succeeded in that. The drug's approval labeling was for clinically isolated syndrome, relapsing remitting MS, and secondary progressive MS with activity. But the drug wasn't tested in either clinically isolated syndrome or relapsing remitting MS. It was only tested in secondary progressive. And, and as I mentioned, the group with activity showed more of a therapeutic effect than the group that didn't have activity. And that activity was, there's several different ways of defining activity. That one that they're talking about there was a, a clinical attack in the two years prior to entry into the study. I think it's a fair assumption, and based on the earlier fingolimod studies, that the drug would have an effect on relapse and remitting disease and clinically isolated syndrome because it looks to have an effect on inflammatory activity, but those populations weren't tested. Findings of the phase three saponamod trial have helped guided us in clinical practice in that it's pretty clear patients with active inflammation and secondary progressive MS are more likely to respond favorably to this therapy. 
patients who don't have active inflammation, who are much further along in the disease and are much older, they appear to be less likely to respond. And indeed, some of the safety issues that were found, the increased rates of uh, respiratory infections and things like that, may outweigh the potential benefits in that those higher risks of infections may outweigh the relatively smaller rate of slowing of disability progression. So in clinical practice, I have been using it more in patients who are younger with active inflammation and using it less in patients who are older without evidence of active inflammation.